Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the things that you might not be thinking about could really have an impact in the performance of everything that you spray on your farm. What I'm talking about is water quality. We're going to talk about some of the water treatment options that you should consider for this season. Well, here on Ag PhD, we often talk about corn, soybeans, and wheat, but today we're going to talk about a couple of other crops field peas and dry beans when it comes to herbicide selections this spring. Unfortunately, there aren't many herbicide selections that will control this weed in any crop, but we'll talk about how to stop it on your farm a little later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. The Grain Tap Guard from Farm Shop MFG has helped farmers keep their bushels safe from spoilage and shrinkage loss in bins all across the country. And this low cost solution just became even more affordable. Farm Shop MFG is offering a $100 factory rebate on all Grain Temp Guard bin monitoring systems. This offer is available for a limited time only, so take advantage of this program now to upgrade your bins and protect your crop investments. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about what's the purpose of grass waterways. When you look at fields around the country, you may notice some different things going on out there. And one thing that is pretty common whenever you've got hilly fields is generally in the valley, you'll see a grass pathway for water to move. That's why we have grass waterways in many situations, just because of, well, there's going to be a lot of water moving through that area. And if we want to protect the soil, that's the best way to do it. So right behind us, for example, is a very small area where there are some hills. Okay, in that case, then drain tile usually works just fine. But the problem is if you have a tremendous amount of water, then it actually can cut through that soil. And that's typically where we're talking about grass waterways instead of drain tile. So where grass waterways are at, usually what we do with the drain tile is we'll stay outside the grass waterway by about five feet or so. So we kind of keep that water table down, which is great for the health of the grass waterway. But again, that grass waterway is there so it can catch all this massive flow of water that's going through the field. Usually only happens a few times of the year, but it really saves the farmer in the fact that usually that, that soil will end up at the bottom of the field. Then he has to bring it all the way back up into the field. It's a lot of work if you don't have the waterway. The other thing with the grass waterway is even if you've got drain tile, even if you're doing no-till and you're doing all these things right to protect the soil on those hillsides, there is going to be a small amount of soil that is going to move when you get a lot of rain like that. So keeping that out of our rivers and streams and lakes is really important because the topsoil in many farms is pretty fertile. That's why we're, we're using it to grow good crops. So if you can catch that soil in the grass on the way out of the field, that's a great thing for the farmer to maintain that soil at least somewhere in his field and keep it out of bodies of water. Yeah, and the waterway will also catch excess fertilizer or egg chemicals so they don't leave the field as well. So lots of purposes for that grass waterway and that's why you see so many of them around the country. Grass waterways are great for many reasons, but one thing that we have to watch out for in grass waterways is weeds that might like that type of environment as well. Our Weed of the Week is one example. Can you identify this week's weed? Give it all away. Find love and give it all away. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, 
AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump, providing the ultimate protection. This wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the soil warrior. One of the most important things if you want to have good control of weeds is to use the right type of water or use some water conditioners when you're going to spray out your herbicide. Now this also impacts fungicides, insecticides, especially the biological products. So today we want to talk just a little bit about water treatment. You know, we've talked about this for many, many years, Brian. I've been an agronomist since back in the early 1990s. And at that time, when we were spraying some of the ALS and SU chemistries, we were really concerned about what the pH of water was. But since we switched over to Roundup, a lot of the concern was about hard water particles and, and tying them up. Now we've got dicamba and we're worried about, well, we can't have ammonium sulfate in like we were using with Roundup. And we've kind of lost a lot of the discussion here has been just completely lost and mixed up. I don't know what to think about is what many farmers will say when you say, what kind of water do you need to get the best efficacy out of the products that we're using? So let's get back to the basics here. There's a few things that we need to know. We need to know what the water quality is, which means taking a simple water test. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. doesn't take very much time at all to get a sample or any of that. And then we want to find out what the pH is and what is in the water, especially when we look at some of these hard water particles like copper and calcium, magnesium and iron. All right, so Darren mentioned the hard water ions and really what, here's what happens. Let's say you have excess calcium in your water. That calcium can bind with Roundup, just as an example. And basically the Roundup that you thought you were spraying, let's say your rate was 32 ounces per acre. Well, actually there might only be 28 ounces that's left effective because four ounces got neutralized because of that calcium. So the purpose of adding some type of water treatment, and Darren mentioned already ammonium sulfate in the past, the purpose of that ammonium sulfate was always, hey, we wanna to try to bind with that or tie up that calcium, magnesium, those hard water ions, and it could do that fairly well. That's the whole purpose of some type of water conditioner when it comes to the hard water ions. We just don't want them to neutralize our chemistry. And again, this can affect everything. Like I said earlier, herbicide, fungicide, insecticide, even these biological or natural products. So we really encourage you to take a look at everything you're going to be spraying. In addition to all those different elements that Brian was talking about, we're very concerned about the pH of the water too. Now back in the old SU and ALS chemistry days, many times we were concerned about not dropping the pH down to a two or a three, which some of the different additions that we're putting into our tank would do. We wanted to keep that pH a little more neutral. When we look at what plants really want, Plants like slightly acidic formulations. We seem to get better uptake on foliar nutrition, for example, if we can be slightly acidic. I'm talking like a five and a half or six pH. So when we're talking about water treatment options here or any additions that we're putting in the spray tank, I like to look at what the pH of that solution is going to be as well, because that does have an impact on efficacy. All right, here's one other thing that you may not have even thought about, chlorine. Well, what's the purpose of chlorine in water? The purpose is to kill biologicals, kill microbes, kill anything that could potentially be harmful to human beings. Okay, and that's great. But I just wanna give you an example that happened on our own farm. So basically we switched where we had our water tanks. We were pulling off of well water, and then we moved to another one of our farms where we had rural water. 
Well, I didn't even think about this, but the rural water had chlorine in it. So all of a sudden, our biological products we were using, or natural products as we call them, weren't as effective. Well, of course they weren't. We were putting chlorine in, in there, and that was literally killing the beneficial microbes that we were trying to get out on our field to get positive yield response. So what do you do in that case? Like Darren said already, test the water. We want to find out pH, we want to find out all these hard water ions, and we also want to see is there any chlorine in there. Now you're going to know most of the time if there's chlorine in there or not. If it's well water, you don't have it. If it's almost anything else, you do. The next thing, once you determine what you've got, is you want to put some kind of treatment out there. I guess one last thing that I'll say about this chlorine deal and just water treatment in general. So the rural water that we were getting, or we are getting, yes, it's going to have fewer hard water ions, but the flip side of that is the pH is much higher. The pH is about a full point higher. So a lot of times it's eight and a half, if not even nine for a pH. Well, like Darren said, eight and a half or nine for a pH is not good. So we need to adjust the pH. We want to get rid of the chlorine and continue to do some more hard water treating just even with the rural water that we have. Well, over the years, we've been researching many different products and many different solutions, looking for the perfect fit that could cure our well water, but also work well with the rural water or municipal water sources too. And we finally found a few things that actually are showing some results. For example, one of the things that's worked the best, tying up the copper and calcium, magnesium and iron that we've got in most well water sources, has been a product called Waterite. Waterite has been a, a good solution for not only taking those hard water elements out, but also lowering that water pH down. With Waterite, you can lower the pH down to about 5.5. So we kind of get the best of both worlds with one product. Then it comes to the chlorine. The chlorine neutralizer we've been using is called BioPrep, but there are other products out there too. So. I guess the big thing here is we just want to make sure you're taking a look at everything from pH to chlorine to the hard water ions and then just run a few tests on your farm. It, it's not going to take a whole lot. You don't have to constantly test because you're going to be using the same water most likely all season long. So just run your tests at the start of the year and then get the appropriate treatment and you should be in good shape. The best place to start though is just by testing your water to know what you've got and what you're fighting against. And then like Brian said, just do a little bit of trial work on your farm to see if you see some differences like we've seen on our farm. Well, one weed that we can use all the help in the world to fight against is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it later in the show. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334 Agra US. Green Tip Guard from Farm Shop MFG has helped farmers keep their bushels safe from spoilage and shrinkage loss in bins all across the country. And this low cost solution just became even more affordable. Farm Shop MFG is offering a $100 factory rebate on all Green Temp Guard bin monitoring systems. This offer is available for a limited time only, so take advantage of this program now to upgrade your bins and protect your crop investments. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. This is a seed bag. This bag is made of craft paper with a cellophane liner and provides nothing for seed growth. This is a seed bed. It was prepared with Case IH soil management tools. It optimizes everything from nutrient access to water infiltration to create the perfect environment for early uniform emergence. Get to know why your seed bed drives productivity at caseih.com slash soil management. More choices, more money. 
With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. When it comes to dry bean and field pea herbicides, what we're going to equate this to is soybeans. We talk soybeans all the time here on the show, and whenever you hear us talk soybeans, just kind of keep in mind that these crops, dry beans and field peas, are pretty similar plants. So we're going to talk about the specific herbicides you can and can't use in field peas and dry beans today. You know, the thing with broadleaf crops, Brian, is there just aren't that many post-emerge alternatives to clean up broadleaf weeds. So we've got to do a great job pre-emerge. And just like we talk about with soybeans, we'll say the same thing here. We've got to look at putting multiple effective modes of action out pre. Now in the case of field peas, we can do that with our standard three pre-program that we use in soybeans with one little tweak. You can still use the yellows like trifluralin, sonalan, or prowl, but then for the PPO component, you can use Spartan. So where in soybeans, we would be talking about authority. In field peas, we'll talk about Spartan. They're the same active ingredient. And then the other thing in field peas is you can use Metribuzin, which adds a lot of punch on some of these broadleaf weeds. When it comes to dry beans, it's almost identical with the exception of this. You can't use Metribuzin. You can still use the yellow. You can still use Spartan but you just can't use the Metribuzin. Metribuzin is too hard on dry beans. So when we compare this to soybeans, again, we talk about three pre's all the time. That's yellow, Metribuzin, and a PPO. The only difference, Darren mentioned authority, but I also want to throw in here Valor. You can't use Valor in dry beans or field peas unless some labeling has all of a sudden changed this spring that we're not aware of. Well, the reason this is so important is we can wipe out a lot of those small seeded broad leaves early. Now that leaves the large seeded broadleaves, and maybe you've got some cockleburrs, or maybe you've got sunflowers or, or other weeds that we need to address post-emerge. Our options here are a little bit limited. For example, in field peas, you could use Bassagran, or better yet, you could use Varisto, so you've got that combination of the active ingredient in Raptor or Beyond, and you've got the active ingredient from Bassagran. So you got two different effective modes of action here on many of these weeds. Now the key here with Bassagran, it likes hot and humid weather in order for weed control to be optimized. So we want to look for days where we get 150 points between temperature and humidity. So 80% humidity, well you'd only need a 70 degree day to really get pretty good activity but you can run the math on this. Sometimes it might be an 85 degree day and a 65% humidity that you look for. Whatever it is in your area, if we can get 150 points, that's where it works the best. Now, if you don't get that, you can still get it to work. It's just gonna be a little bit tougher. So make sure you're doing everything right, like using plenty of gallons of water, small enough droplets to get good coverage, uh, and run your sprayer slow enough that you're not just blowing through the field and missing some weeds. When it comes to dry beans, you got the same choices. You can use Bassagran or you can use Raptor and Pursuit, Raptor, basically the same thing. So either one of those is fine. But in addition with dry beans, you can also use Reflex. So that's real similar to Flexstar that we talk about all the time in soybeans. That has some residual, it has some good activity on some small seeded broad leaves and a few large seeded broad leaves, but you wanna make sure that those weeds are small. The last thing that I'll throw in is Clethodum or there are some other grass killers that are labeled too for both field peas and dry beans. Remember, these are broadleaf crops, so it's pretty easy to control the grass. You start with a yellow, you follow with the clethodim. Uh, you shouldn't have grass issues, you shouldn't have volunteer corn issues or anything like that. Our biggest concern, again, like Darren said, is really those broadleaf weeds. So that's why we would strongly encourage you, use as much and as high a rate as you possibly can pre-emerge so you don't have so many weeds coming post. These are crops that can be potentially very profitable for your farm, but the big thing here is you need to have yield. If you've got weed control issues, you will lose yield fast with field peas and dry beans. Well, unfortunately, all the herbicides that we mentioned that are labeled in field peas and dry beans are not very effective on our Weed of the Week, but we'll tell you what is coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont.
Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our Weed of the Week is Scouring Rush. Well, Scouring Rush has been called a lot of different names, Brian, and I don't even want to get into Field some of the names tail, that we hear about. There are a few different uh, names. I was thinking some more colorful ones, too. The, the thing about this weed is it's a perennial, it's got rhizomes underneath the ground, and it has virtually no leaves, no place to stick a herbicide to. Right. Oh, and by the way, when I mentioned Field Horsetail, a lot of people will say, well, Field Horsetail and Scouring Rush are two different things. They're, they're basically the same thing, kind of like how I consider water hemp and palmer pigweed basically the same thing. Well, so same either control, way, the same control yes. methods are going to work with each of these. One of them that's not as effective as some people think is tillage. And I know this from firsthand experience. We, we actually did some plowing through a patch of scouring rush. And what ended up happening is we just spread the scouring rush out wider by doing this tillage. We chopped up those rhizomes and many more plants got started. You're better off not doing the tillage, leaving it all intact, trying to move a herbicide through it, and here's the other thing, trying to change the environment so scouring rush can't thrive. Yeah, so that environment that scouring rush likes is wet. All you have Persistently to do, wet. Right, all you have to do in a lot of cases is just put some drain tile through there, get some good crop growing there, and typically the scouring rush will go away over time. Where we see scouring rush often is in areas of the field where we just can't get good consistent crop canopy or crop growth or thin stands. Those types of issues, as Brian mentioned, it often relates to drainage because we see this in the low spots and in the valleys and fields. So going way back, here's my real quick story with scouring rush. So there was a railroad company that was working with our dad on how to control this weed. They had tried super high rates of Roundup, super high rates of atrazine, super high rates of 2,4-D, and nothing was working. Well, my dad was talking to him about this, and he said, well, why do you care anyway? You got some scouring rush near your train tracks, no big deal. And they said, no, this is a really big deal because when the scouring rush gets over our train tracks, our trains can't stop. We have to kill this weed. What they ended up finding was germoxone or paraquat. Now, Paraquat, germoxone, that's changing labeling here soon where you have to have a closed handling system. Paraquat, germoxone, it's basically the same danger factor to human beings as gasoline is. So be super careful if you're going to use this. But yes, this would have to be used in a burn down situation either in the spring or the fall because germoxone, paraquat, will kill everything. I've also heard of in crop applications of things like Reflex or Flexstar, tank mixed with Harmony GT, which normally would be a really hot mix that I'd say, you know, that's probably gonna to be too hot for any kind of broadleaf crop that's out there. But you know what, if it's something that can knock back those weeds without completely killing your crop, it may be worth trying if you have an in-crop situation. Yep, but I don't think that's gonna work for you super well. So again, about our only suggestion for you is germoxone, either before you plant or at the end of the season. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. For more information about this beast, available only in our new gray poly, call 855-CAPELLO or visit capellausa.com to find a dealer near you. Capello, wherever you are, we are. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, 
and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBearPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. This is a seed bag. This bag is made of craft paper with a cellophane liner and provides nothing for seed growth. This is a seed bed. It was prepared with Case IH soil management tools. It optimizes everything from nutrient access to water infiltration to create the perfect environment for early uniform emergence. Get to know why your seed bed drives productivity at caseih.com slash soil management. Drop tubes are becoming a popular addition to sprayers across the country. We'll discuss some of the ways farmers are using them in today's Iron Talk. One of the biggest challenges with farming is that so many things need to be done at the same time, and often the windows for doing those jobs are pretty narrow. Take, for example, last fall. Chances are, if your farm is anything like ours, you just didn't have enough good days to get all those jobs done. You may still have seedbed prep, residue management, and fertility application to do now, but you also need to plant a crop timely and apply crop protection products to stop the first flush of weeds. The idea of creating additional windows for applying nutrients and crop protection products is leading more farm operations to install drop tubes on their sprayers. Drop tubes are a lightweight addition to your spray bar and easy to install. One drop tube attachment we use on our farm is called the Y-tube, which we use for nitrogen application at different timings throughout the season. When making applications like this, it's important to make sure that your application equipment is built with non-corrosive and ag chemical resistant materials. Ours are also easy to remove and quite customizable to different application scenarios. Another important in-season consideration we have for our drop tubes include getting fertilizer and herbicide under the canopy exactly where you need it to be. Doing this is easy using a device like the dual application puck attached to the drop tube for upward spraying, allowing for coverage under the canopy for fungicide. The dual application puck can also be inverted and used to apply herbicide spraying downward as a preventative or rescue application. Drop tubes allow you to do more applications yourself, which greatly lowers your input and custom app charges for insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, and even for in-season nutrient applications such as nitrogen laybys. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.